everything that you close the door to that would destroy the kingdom of God in your life, heaven shall stand with you. You don't have to be defeated by suffering, corruption, or hardships. You can bind up their power over your soul and find the joy of the Lord in the storm that this world is experiencing. Thanks for joining us on Life Journeys, a podcast about thriving through the worst pain that life brings. With global initiatives threatening big changes to our way of life, we're going to need to activate Jesus' words about mountain-moving faith. Words That Work is the ongoing series on life journeys that is rooted in releasing revelational words of faith that will work every time and with everyone. It's about moving the mountains that keep us from the presence and goodness of God. It's about defining our life purpose and identity through encountering Him until we have the power to move the obstacles that are destroying our liberty and hope. Jesus told his followers that he has given us the keys of the kingdom. Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to talk to you about how to use those keys in real life applications that will work for you every day, and you'll no longer have to wonder about what this passage in Matthew 16 is all about. When Peter answered Jesus' question about who he was, Jesus told him that it was by revelation, not by anything that any man had done or taught him, that gave him the answer. The truth of God didn't come by science or education validating it. God has chosen to reveal himself by the Spirit, directly into the human heart, and when he does... His ruling authority is established in what he calls the church. This is when Jesus gave Peter his heavenly name, you see, and he changed his fundamental identity by revelation knowledge. Who we truly are is something we discover from God alone as we wrestle with our identity. It is not something we invent or accept because of how we feel. It was, therefore, with this understanding that Jesus told Peter of the authority that he had given him, and us. When we bind or loose something on earth, heaven is going to back us up. God is going to respond as we establish revelation power over the things in this world that tear men away from the kingdom of God. Now, Let's get into this principle of binding and loosing and understand that it doesn't mean declaring with our voice that we bind or loose anything. It's much deeper than that. Jesus said in the book of Revelation that he would keep the church in Philadelphia from the hour of temptation that will come to try all that dwell on the face of the earth. They had attained the place of patience in tribulation. Remember that. They had attained the power of God to keep from being put to the proof yet again. They had found the keys of the kingdom Jesus spoke to Peter about. What you bind, heaven will bind. And what you loose, heaven will loose. Everything that you close the door to that would destroy the kingdom of God in your life, heaven shall stand with you to help you close that door. Everything you open up and release for the sake of the kingdom of God operating in your life, heaven shall stand with you with all authority. You don't have to be defeated by suffering, corruption, and hardships. You can bind up their power over your soul, and you can find the joy of the Lord in the storm that this world is experiencing. Seek it from the Lord instead of the world, and you won't be disappointed. God will reveal it to you. Now, before I go any further, I want to give you an example of that because it happened just this morning in prayer. I often pray the Lord's Prayer and break it down in ways that apply to my life and family. I often pray, Lord, grant revelation knowledge about how to overcome the things in our lives to keep us from the fullness of your kingdom. You told me to pray, thy kingdom come. Lord, let deception be bound. 
Let love be loosed. May your glory and presence be manifested in my heart today. This morning, as I prayed about the principles of his kingdom being released, I felt a focus on patience rise up in my prayer. I knew I needed more patience. I always have. It was then that revelation came to bring a greater release and freedom on my journey towards that patience. It came to me. Patience is not a problem when God's glory fills our souls. It's a manifestation of the fullness of God, giving us more than we could want for. When we have the very best that we are created for, the lack of relevant want makes patience as natural as breathing. Remember, the Lord said, You are my shepherd, I shall not want, as he inspired the 23rd Psalm. In other words, when we have the best that we're created to have, the impatient urges for any other want just fade away. It's like, why be impatient for that $100 that somebody owes us when we just got a million dollars in spiritual currency as God filled our soul yet again? With the power of binding and loosing, by the exercise of the force of fire-tested patience, released by God's presence, we are called to rule and reign in the earth. Our position in the authority of grace through the blood of Jesus is to release the will of God in the earth. He is determined to reign through us as those who wield the sword of the Lord in spiritual warfare. We are thus endowed by heaven with the power of prayer. Our warfare releases in us the character of the kingdom so that we are ruled by God's love and peace instead of by anxiety and anger. Now, let's note the next thing. Jesus talks about this in Matthew 16. He says he is going to be crucified, and then he has to rebuke Peter for his carnal interest in trying to preserve Jesus' life and his own. I see that this is no place to yield to temptations, to use our authority to grant an abundant materialistic existence. It is through being crucified to the world and the world to us that we walk by this faith. We do not seek to rule by praying against the very fires that refine a man's life. Only through the fire-tested patience of the cross upon our own journey will we have learned how to properly apply the authority of God as he rules through us, either in celebration or in tribulation. Until we have walked through the valley of the shadow of death and learned neither to rebuke it or fear it, we won't be able to turn many of the kingdom keys. You see, God tends to listen to and bind and loose from heaven those prayers that come from saints who have established joy and peace in this world's prison cells. One day in prayer this came. You've been called to rule in the earth for me. Take what is mine and establish my kingdom in it. You're ordained to bear the fruit of my image in my name, and it is to be natural for you to receive answered prayer, for it is a union with my plan for you in the earth. It's me working through you as I intended from the beginning. That came from the word in John chapter 15, verse 8, where Jesus was talking about bearing fruit and receiving answered prayer. This is exactly what the Great Commission is all about, to preach and live the kingdom of God, to establish it here. Here we see Jesus showing us that this is how we glorify God on the earth, bearing fruit, a being in Christ, and thus manifesting his life, his love, his peace, his patience, and his strength. Now, this is more than merely exerting our own moral willpower to try harder to be pure and decent and loving. It's the result of experiencing the power of the living Christ personally. It's having spiritual encounters with a reality greater than this world and human potential. 
It's the personal power of being united with Christ and living His life. Not imitating Him by His example, but being lifted up powerfully by His presence and promised fullness. I can just hear Jesus saying, I have given you heaven's identity, heaven's name for you. It is who you are. When you saw who I was by revelation, your eyes were opened to see who you are. This is the power upon which I will build my church, my called out people. When people see who I truly am, they may also begin to see who they really are. For in their natural state of physical senses and abilities, they do not see their true and eternal identity. This revelation power over this world and the carnal self-life is given to you. Thus, it is power over hell and its decisions against you. By this revelation, you have the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose the principalities of this world. By revelation life, you destroy, bind up, and render powerless the attacks of this world on your primary reality and eternal identity in the kingdom of God. That power that comes over all darkness, that seeks to destroy your life, your peace, your joy, your love, and your hope. When you use that power of faith to bind or to loose the forces of heavenly revelation, know this, heaven is with you. What you bind or loose by revelation faith, heaven will always back you up. That's what I experienced this morning in prayer as I prayed God loose kingdom patience into my life. And he said, you will have patience as you continue to grow in my presence and in my glory, where you will have want of nothing. Therefore, with these keys, I'm binding lies and loosing truth. I'm binding deception and loosing faith, binding fear and loosing peace, binding self-confidence and pride and loosing God's presence and provision, binding doubt and loosing divine identity. And I'm not doing it by simply saying the words. I'm doing it by saying, Lord, I bind up this impatience and I loose your kingdom and your glory. I pray, come into my life and then wait upon him until revelation comes and his presence is unlocked. All these and much more have I done over the past many months in battling with darkness and binding thoughts of despair and death and loosening the mind of heaven and of Christ's life in me. I'm gaining power over this world overcoming its influence and releasing God's glory. I'm binding the influence of this world and loosing the influence of the Word of God is what I call my primary and eternal reality. And all of this is done by revelation, not by mental assent, doctrinal pursuits, rote memorization of Scripture, or positive mental attitudes. It comes by seeking the Word until God's presence comes and makes something real. It's the result of wrestling with God like Jacob until God builds on and clarifies the new name He's writing upon our lives through faith. It's revealing more of our true identity and why we're on the earth. Who we are and why we're here is a big part of binding and loosing. You can unlock the presence of God in your life. There are revelation principles that remove the mountains, keeping us from joy, hope, peace, and purpose when our world gets turned upside down. Look for these words that work with Pastor Hardica as he shares what has helped him when life got hard. And don't forget to check out his book, The Fortress and the Firebrand, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thanks for listening to Life Journeys. Find new episodes every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're new to this series, it begins with the September 16th episode. Everything that you close the door to that would destroy the kingdom of God in your life, heaven shall stand with you. You don't have to be defeated by suffering, corruption, or hardships. You can bind up their power over your soul and find the joy of the Lord in the storm that this world is experiencing.